don't know if you guys can see or not but that's the word credits burned into this tube it's kind of hard to see I'm trying to get the light just right but it just on this old camera it's not going to pick up very well anyway but it's got the word credits and it's got like a dark bar over here and past the word credits it's got another dark bar over there there was some type of bar at the bottom that showed some stats on a game that this was run on this is the one from uh, that local amusement company that I told you about they sold me for eighty dollars and he said it had no screen burn had good color well all the colored guns are are failing and are failed and it does have screen burn in it and this is in the Mortal Kombat cabinet right now I want to take this out here in probably the next thirty minutes and uh, put the other monitor in there I just bought from a guy in Georgia hopefully it'll work out pretty good I want to change out the Mortal Kombat monitor uh, I've got a chassis in there it's the original that came that uh, I just recapped but the original tube was bad in it I tried to do a rejuvenation of course and uh, two guns improved but the blue is uh, just about shot and then uh, I got this tube from a local vendor and he sold me a bad tube and uh, it's not working out either all three guns are dead practically and uh, it's worse than the old tube so I finally went to Georgia a couple hours away and uh, bought a whole K7400 uh, Wells Gardner monitor the tube and the chassis and everything is in great shape and uh, haven't got to try it out in this cabinet yet but we're going to pull this out of here and uh, I know some other people have already done some uh, instructionals on how to get the monitor out but uh, I just figured I'd go ahead and do maybe one more just to at least show you what I'm doing here got your power connection there got your signals your red green blue your sink and your ground coming from your uh, Mortal Kombat boards and uh, then you've got uh, <coughs> up in the front up there you've got your controls for uh, you know all your sizing and uh, your contrast brightness all that kind of stuff you know uh, you have to disconnect all those things and uh, then you can pull the monitor on out if you've got it unbolted and uh, I want to go ahead and disconnect those wires right now Let's see if I can get this loose here there we go, a little bit tight on this one so that's our power, we just disconnected got our signal in there which on this particular game is uh, split into two This right here is your sink this is your red green blue and your ground going to pull our sink wire off got that loose doing this one handed so I'm having a hard time but it's very tight too on this cap on this chassis I'm going to set the camera down for a second okay even though I had two hands it was still difficult this fits just extremely tight and uh Anyway, got that loose. That's for uh, your colors and your crown. And there's your sink. And since I have a uh, zip tie right there, I'm going to have to cut that before we pull the monitor out, or else I'm going to end up yanking on my board. This connects right there. I could pull that loose, but uh, since this is going to be used, this entire cable to hook up to the new monitor, we just have to cut that zip tie. So, uh, We've also got to get loose the uh, little controls in the front there. We'll do that right now. Take a look. Uh, these are mounted to a little metal board, and I'm going to leave that, that little mounting clip there. I'm going to take loose the little plastic uh, snap ends off of the circuit board itself and pop the circuit board loose and just leave those little plastic snap connector things and uh, hopefully the new one should snap right in there it's kind of a standard there 
I believe it will. I think its little harness comes from the underside of the K7400, comes from the upper side of this little remote board. But uh, let me grab a set of needle nose. A needle nose and uh, these little connectors here. If you just give them just a slight squeeze, you can pull forward on the circuit board and you should be able to pull it right off of that hole. I know you can't see right now, I'm having to use part of my other hand. Let me cut away from here because this is going to take both my hands. We've got this loose and it'll just pop right off. And the wiring connector comes straight through the middle there, so what I'm going to do is just dis disconnect the wire so I don't have to take the metal bracket off. You can see the metal bracket. The wire goes right through the middle of there, and I can't can't fit the circuit board out. At least I don't think I can. Let's see. Now it's a little, a little too large. It's going to end up damaging one of the uh, pots if I do that, so... Anyway, we'll just pop this clip loose right here. Hold on just a second. Okay, got that loose. There's only one way it connects. It's got a couple little keyed positions. It might be hard to see here in this light, but right there is like a kind of a little keyed place, and there's another one. And where it mounts has got two slots. There's only one way to plug it in unless you really force it the opposite way. So we'll set this down for a second. Pull our wire out through the back so it came out of there. Drop it down into the back of the cabinet. That's pretty much we've got everything disconnected. If I don't bust my knee on the cab. There's a wire we just disconnected there coming out from the chassis. Our power connection and uh, that right there, which we still have to cut that wire tie off of. Let me get some snips. There we go. If you can see. I just snipped through that wire tie there. Pull this loose. I just did that. It probably wasn't that way from the factory, but I like to kind of keep wires from getting in the way when you close the back of this thing. So the only thing we really have to worry about dangling back here right now is this. Uh, remote board connector and we'll kind of wrap it up on the bracket back here there we go got it wrapped up so it's not going to be dangling when we try to pull the monitor out from the front and there's our remote board there that aside right here and the monitor it's got four bolts coming from the back that have taps on them and these taps are already loose because when I was putting this new tube in I did a tube swap on this chassis I just put these on temporarily hand tighten and uh, this part of the little flange off the tube is what what stays on the tube pretty much and then it it mounts to this frame this is the frame that holds the chassis on to the to the tube assembly We'll just go ahead and take these off right quick.
way if you're wondering what that is right there that's your power going up to your marquee to your light assembly up here and you got to kind of be careful with those you can kind of try to tuck it out of the way it'll probably fall again but it probably won't hurt anything but yeah it's back in there now now all that's left is to pull the monitor out of the cab and set it aside so I want to set this on the tripod give me a second to cut away okay first thing I'm going to do is put the control panel down might make it a little easier <coughs> and uh, some of these brackets these uh, frames for these monitors will have a, a hex head bolt underneath here helping hold this to the the tube assembly or it'll be what it actually be is a two part frame there'll be uh, some little brackets right here that actually bolt to another bracket that extends the rest of the way horizontally here and those bolts the heads of them will kind of go down behind this bracket that's built in on each side of the machine and it actually in a way it helps you because it kind of helps when you're setting the monitor back in there it kind of locks it in place but when you go to pull it out you're going to have to really give it some oomph and push up on it to get the top of those heads from those bolts to pick up and, and release off of these mountain brackets here. So this I don't think has it so it should just really pop right out. And that's pretty much it. Take this off of the tripod here. And that's it sitting there and uh, like I said it's got a good chassis on it I rebuilt that chassis it's got all new capacitors and uh, didn't put a new flyback on it but I don't believe it needed one uh, and uh, the last tube had good focus especially after I rejuvenated it but it had a weak gun and and this poor tube <laughs> it's got all three guns weak I can't even get it to test on my rejuvenator and uh, like I said if you remember maybe one of my other videos this is the same model number tube A63 AGD 01X exact same model number tube that's in the chassis and tube assembly that I'm about to put back in here and uh, I know for certain it works because uh, the guy showed me before I left his house and we're going to go in there and get it right now and bring it in here and set it back in the cab I'll, I'll go ahead and set the tripod up and uh, I'll turn it on before I set the new monitor in place and uh, you can watch me put that one in place. there because I got kind of a tight space here to come through so I was carrying it and I just went ahead and put it up here in one set in but uh but it's pretty much in there we've got to put the four taps on it's not gonna go anywhere the way it's sitting angled in this cabinet but uh best thing to do is to go ahead and get the taps on and make sure it's not coming out of the cabinet shouldn't be anybody behind there pushing on it set in there and it looks just like the other one no difference I just know this one performs a lot better and what you want to do before you go ahead and put up your uh, your bezel around the screen and your glass is go ahead and clean your tube really good once you get all your wiring hooked up and you know it's working that way your tube is clean before you put the glass over it and everything and uh, you can come back and give your glass a final clean you might want to clean the back side of it first then go ahead and clean the front side of it put the glass in place that way you know everything's clean now it may get dirty over time you might want to take that glass off every now and then take your bezel off and clean your tube really good but uh, just first off make sure everything's working before you go and reassemble it that way you know it looks real good whenever you get done and you can just continue to clean the front of the glass and you know maybe 
realistically once a year maybe take it apart and clean the, the tube and clean the back of the glass and the front of the glass and everything. So we're going to go ahead and connect the rest of the wiring back up. We'll go ahead and do that now in one step. Let me just get the camera off the tripod. But uh, we got that mounting spot there. We'll go ahead and connect that first for your remote board. And after I cut my lamp back on, I turned it off a minute ago. And I wrapped this remote board up around the uh, the frame of the monitor before I moved it to make sure it didn't get cramped in there when I was setting the tube in place. And it's got plenty of wire. And this is going to extend up to the front. We'll go ahead and kind of set it temporarily where I can get at it. Right there. And this one is in a little plastic frame. I have to snap it out of that first because this came off of another game. Uh, I don't know what what monitor this game was in, but that little piece of plastic was actually supposed to go into the other cabinet. So snap that apart. Hold on a second. Slid our circuit board out of there. And it should mount right in this one. Let's take a look at our words to make sure. Okay, right now the words are upside down, so need to flip it around. Hang it here temporarily. And just like the other one, if you can see, these little plastic tabs will pop through these holes and mount it in place. Snap, 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 and that's it. Just make sure it's in place good. And you may bump your pots around, so if you had to monitor an adjustment before you did this kind of a swap out or anything, you know, if you're putting in another cab, you're going to have to readjust them anyway. But if you knock them way out of alignment, just be prepared to know that they are knocked out of out of alignment or something, and you'll have to mess with them because when you go pushing this in, you might bump one. But looks real good. Fit right in, just like a glove. Make sure that your harness that comes up from the chassis is connected as well as possible. I have heard that if you're supposed to have a remote board like this, and it comes disconnected somehow either from the chassis or from this remote board there could be damage that results on your chassis itself if this is not connected when you power the monitor on uh, I don't know that for sure you know I'm not a monitor expert I'm still learning like a lot of you guys and uh, that's just something I'm going to warn you about in case you do have a remote board and you're trying to swap some of this out don't power the monitor on until you get all the wiring connected for the remote board and uh, make sure it's connected to the chassis I'm going to cut away for just a second. Okay guys, I ran into a little problem here. The power connection on here is different than the power connection for my old monitor and what's coming from the cab here. So I'm, I don't want to hack it. Uh, I could hack it just for testing purposes, but it's, it's actually 1 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday night and I have work in the morning and uh, I have to get up in like 5 hours. but. Uh, I, I would rather do this properly and get the proper converter and uh, I don't think I have any of that laying around so I'm going to go ahead and uh, see if I can get that ordered and uh, you won't know the difference you'll see in the next clip on this video right here that it'll be connected but I'm going to go ahead and order that and uh, or see if I can't get it locally somewhere and uh, make that conversion because this is female and that's female too and it needs pins sticking out, male pins with little clips on the left and right side to uh, connect with that and uh, 
even though I could rig it, I don't want to rig it uh, unless I'm going to have to wait a long time. If I do, I'll continue with something rigged up just so you can see the monitor running. But uh, we can still connect this up right here. This is our signal coming from the circuit board. Exact same type of connector on this. It's a Wells Gardener, just like the old one. And uh, red, green, and blue goes on. It's a six pin connection, only uses four of the signals right here on this. Even though it does have, I think, horizontal and vertical sync on those, you know, available for those next two pins, there's no wires here. But this secondary connector here, there's a, a set of three pins on down below there, and it has sync on it too. So click that in, and that should be proper, so that should be connected. Everything's connected properly there. And my battery's going to die before long, so I'm going to sign off here. We've got everything connected up as far as wiring and everything, and it's physically put into the cabinet. It's ready to go except for the the power connection. That's kind of a bummer, but I'm not an impatient person, and uh, I can wait to get it done right. If it's going to take a while to order, I, I may hack something within the next day just to take a look at it, but uh, you know, hopefully I won't have to do that. Hopefully I can get a hold of it pretty quick. But uh, just watch the rest of the clip here, and uh, I'll probably come back in a minute, and you'll see this thing running. Hey guys, uh, trying to continue with this video about the uh, new Mortal Kombat 1 monitor. Uh, it's been quite a few days and I didn't finish this video. Uh, this is just being added into the same video this clip is. But uh, if you remember, um, I had a problem when I went to connect it up because my power adapter didn't match. And what I've done here is I've actually just, you know, rigged a temporary setup. And uh, I've got my hot, my ground, and my neutral run from a, a normal AC power cord that connects to like a computer monitor or uh, maybe a computer unit. Just got the standard end on here. And I've just got my cord hooked up temporarily with a wire tie or a twist tie. And uh, I just wanted to get power in there temporarily. So that is the connector on the motherboard. And I didn't have a connector to fit it. Um, from this cabinet, I have a Molex connector, and it looks like this right here. And this Molex connector would not connect to that. They're both female. I needed one that has uh, male extensions that go down into that and clips on each side. And uh, instead of just plain circular uh, connectors, uh, the hot and the neutral on this one is actually kind of a D-shaped and in the center for the uh, ground is round. But uh, I just run that temporarily. This is not something that you'd want to muck with a lot because uh, that's uh, AC voltage coming in right through there and uh, going right into that that adapter on the uh, chassis. But uh, I just wanted to do it just to test the monitor out and everything. And uh, It's a good connection. Uh, it's providing plenty of power for it. Uh, but uh, it was running okay for a few days and uh, I don't think it's the fault of the guy who sold me the monitor or anything like that. It's just uh, I started noticing uh, for just a few days I was testing it and uh, it started, you know, just every once in a while it would flicker a little bit like it was getting darker. And come to find out what it was, it was losing a color. It was losing blue. Seems like I'm doomed with problems with the blue colors on arcade monitors, but uh, it's nothing to do with the tube. Uh, if you can see right here, I've got the neck board off of this monitor right now. 
and uh, there's the end of the tube there but uh, right now the neck board is off and uh, these three transistors if you see there they have heat sinks mounted to them those are three transistors and uh, each one is for one of your colors you've got uh, one for red one for green one for blue and the one on the end right here the one on the end is uh, the heat sink is a little bit loose on it and they do have a little thermal paste or some type of heat sink grease that is on each one of the uh, transistors and it seems like maybe the uh, the thermal paste or the heat sink grease has come a little bit loose and that uh, heat sink is flopping around just a little bit and uh, the transistor itself seems to be mounted pretty good I've looked at the traces on the back um, see if I can get this turned over there's the row of traces on the back I know it's not focusing too good the right in the center of your screen there there's um, the traces for each of the three transistors and I think there's some other diodes or something in there but um, they all seem to be flowed pretty good I've reflowed them myself and uh, I did that before I even had any trouble out of the blue but uh, this heat sink right here it's just a it just wobbles around a little bit it's just a little bit loose and uh, the rest of them seem pretty firm so I thought maybe I could just you know just try to put some more heat sink paste on here and and put this back on here and try it but everybody in the arcade controls forum seemed to tell me that uh, these transistors go out a lot they they get really hot and uh, that can cause uh, problems with the color that each transistor is for and the best thing to do is just go ahead and replace the transistor and they said shoot just go ahead and replace all three of them because uh, they're less than a dollar and uh, I think I got them on a, a site called Mouser and they were about sixty something cents a piece went ahead and ordered three of them and uh, actually got them in today it only took me about three days to get them and if I can grab the package got the package right here I'm not going to show you my address or anything but the package is right here and uh, just a flat piece of cardboard with the transistors mounted in between there but uh, either way I haven't opened them yet so I'm going to go ahead and open them right now give me a second here off Hopefully these didn't get damaged because the cardboard is a little bit, a little bit bent, but I think it's okay. And there we go, Mouser Electronics shows a packing list there, and quantity three MPN SI epitaxial, and it's got the. Uh, the number, model number of the transistors, Fairchild, bipolar power, just shows all the details of what I ordered and uh, just a little packing list there. And they're very tiny, so <laughs> they just got them bubble wrapped and they got them in a little static bag here. So not a whole lot of protection, but these things are, are pretty small, you know. The heat sinks that you just seen are probably three times as wide as the transistor. The transistor is just that little part right in the center of those heat sinks there. And if you look right here, you can kind of see through the bag there what one looks like. And there's three in there. So The thing is too that uh, I ordered them straight from looking at the uh, part number on the parts that are on this netboard already and come to find out these may have been replaced in the past or or maybe Wells Gardner just started using these because the spec sheet for this model monitor and some that are similar to it actually show a different model transistor but all the specs are just about the same uh, the only difference is the original ones on the part list uh, say they can operate I guess up to 200 volts and these are ready to operate up to 300 volts so I'm just hoping that doesn't make a, a negative difference and how my monitor works hopefully it'll just serve as you know a little higher uh, I don't know safety measure but uh, 
I'm going to go ahead and get these things installed. I'm going to desolder these and take them out. I'm going to go ahead and take all three of them out and resolder the new ones and uh, hopefully get them running in there and I might come back and show you a video of how it looks. And uh shouldn't take me too awful long but through the magic of video it'll be just a second from now. Well guys I got the transistor in for the blue. And as you can see, the screen looks pretty good. I, I know this video is not very high quality, but you would be able to tell if there was no blue in it. I'm just letting the computer beat me up. I've been playing it up till I got to the endurance rounds, and this is the last endurance rounds. And see that you can see that blue there, real nice. Uh, so the blue's functioning fine. That's the first transistor I put in, and it's a little tough because. Uh, I'm kind of crammed. I, I just wanted to go ahead and do this without removing the neck board and the chassis and everything. So the neck board is put back on temporarily, and I've just been sitting here working with my soldering iron and stuff just right here behind the cabinet in this kind of tight space. And uh, the the wires and stuff are still connected to the neck board, but I didn't want to have to uh, either desolder or anything, which there's some wires coming from the chassis to the neck board that can't just be unplugged and I didn't want to have to take the whole chassis out but right now that first transistor don't know if you can see it in this video that's it right there it doesn't have a heat sink on it at the moment I'm probably going to reattach the heat sink off of this old one but here's two of the new ones right there that haven't been installed and there's the old one and that's just what they look like after you've you put a heat sink on on that heat sink just you can unbend that a little bit and pop it right off and there's a little bit of a uh, of uh, thermal paste or heat sink grease right behind that chip against that piece of metal and it helps disperse that heat across that heat sink which I've been told these are terrible heat sinks and they kind of look like it but uh, one user on one of the uh, arcade controls for them I think it was told me a good idea was to uh, mount a small like DC fan and let it blow across the uh, transistors and I might do that sounds like a great idea but I'll come back when I have the other two transistors in and we'll see if everything was a success I just wanted to show you real quick if you go into the diagnostics here and go down to monitor patterns you can test all your uh, screens to see if the blue outputs there and uh, when I was noticing the problem with the screen going dark sometimes it really seemed like a color was missing to me. I went into the color bars here and as soon as I went into these color bars my blue line right here it was just completely missing. It was missing and all of these colors over here were thrown off because these colors are made by combining the three primary colors here and all these looked, I can't remember, seemed like it was white or gray something like that you definitely didn't have the right colors over here like your purple was completely screwed up too and uh, seems like this blue where the blue is supposed to be seemed like it was just totally black just like the black line beside it and uh, if you went to like uh, the blue screen if I went there instead of being a solid blue screen it was totally black and I knew instantly that that had to be you know a major problem with something on the either the neck board or the chassis or something because it just didn't seem feasible to me that you know a tube that had you know such good emissions on each color when I first got it would just all of a sudden hey the gun just failed for blue it didn't make sense to me but you know I think I've tracked down the problem anyway and uh, I'll go back out of here and uh, cut the machine off and uh, continue with what I was doing get the other two transistors in and we'll come back and take a look I just wanted to show you on this old transistor here <clears throat> I was under the assumption that they uh, had thermal paste between them and the heat sinks which I think some do and I, I thought these did and maybe that's why this one got loose but actually uh, maybe this heat sink is just not crimped down on here tightly because I was able to, to push it out which I might not be able to with my finger right now let me see if I can do it with a pair of pliers hold on Let's see how these pull out, if you can see it in the video. And there's no thermal paste on the back of this at all. I thought there was. And not on the uh, heat sink there. But it's just uh, the pressure 
of uh, that little part right there being crimped down on it plus it's you know more or less these are kind of pushing in on the edge of the uh, edge of the transistor just a little bit holds it with that back part that has a metal if I can turn this over here get over here that metal part right there transfers the heat from this transistor to this heat sink but uh, I could add some thermal paste but since they don't have it uh, I'm probably just going to put them back like they are maybe maybe this is just a failing component and uh, I've read on uh, Bob Roberts site how to check your uh, transistors and stuff with a multimeter so I'm going to try to check these see if I can check them properly and just see if these old ones especially this being the blue one was actually bad but uh, the leads the leads on these new ones here are a little short compared to these I don't know if you can tell in the video but uh, not very much difference but there's a very slight difference in the length of them so I have to do a little, little bit of constructive mending to get these to go right back into PCB holes because they are stretched apart like you can see on this old one here and uh, you have to be real careful too because those traces are very delicate I actually had one on that last transistor lift slightly so I was real careful not to heat it up too much after that and to make sure it took some good solder on the pad afterwards and uh, you just have to watch yourself and be careful alright got all three of the transistors back on the neck board and the neck boards back in place uh, I haven't yet put the uh, heat sinks on uh, I'm contemplating that because I, I do have some uh, monitor chassis that don't even have heat sinks on the transistors. Maybe uh, those models don't get as hot, but uh, I'll probably try to put these back on. I just want to be kind of careful because uh, the traces on this neck board were a real B to mess with. Uh, I do have a little higher wattage uh, soldering iron than I should be using. This is a 40 water and I was trying to be as careful as possible but my 225 waters the the points or the tips on them are are really mugged up and I need to get some more points but uh, you should really use a lower wattage soldering iron and probably a finer tip but I was trying to just be as quick as I could and as delicate as I could and these traces they just lift so easily on this neck board and I've heard that they do and uh, the people who told me that were truly correct but uh, I was able to get them back together pretty good uh, probably not my best soldering job but uh, got them back together pretty good got the uh, solder joints looking okay and uh, everything looks like it's intact and no joints have you know crossed each other or anything like that but uh, I'll try to show you here the new transistors all lined up like three soldiers there and uh, I'm being careful right now because this monitor is running right now. I've already done a little bit of preliminary testing. Um, but we've got all the old transistors out there and and uh, the heat sinks and all. And um, I had this one here. I just marked it with a twist tie because I want to do definite tests on that. That was the one that was giving me trouble for the blue. And uh, see if it does test bad. Um, but whenever I solder, I always have me a... Uh, a little butter bowl with some water and a sponge and I've got a sponge with like a brillo pad on one side and just helps clean off old solder and stuff and uh, you know wet the tip of my solder and iron a little bit to help get some of that gunk off and uh, keep it clean while I'm working as clean as possible but uh, got the cab running and as you can see it looks pretty decent There's all our colors. Everything worked out pretty good. Um, I don't notice a real big difference in like you know any, any kind of clarity or more color or anything like that. You know, um, I don't know if transistors affect that that much. Uh, I you know may, maybe maybe blue has a little bit more intensity. Red and green look about the same. This monitor looked pretty good to begin with when it was working properly. Um, I don't notice a whole lot of difference, you know, not a whole lot of difference, but it looks good. It looks pretty good. And uh, I'll go back and uh, show you the game right quick. Well, like there's a crosshatch pattern too, you know, just a few more tests. I won't show you all the different colors, but uh, got a 
flip the old switch down here. Color's looking pretty good to me. I know you're getting some flicker. That's just the way that happens with these uh, refresh rates on these standard resolution monitors. The medium resolutions are a little bit better on uh, recording on film. But everything seemed to work out pretty good. Colors looking pretty good. So we got the old Mortal Kombat 1 back in business, hopefully to stay. Got a LAN party coming up in about a week and uh, got this thing brightened up. Hopefully guys will pay it a good bit of attention because the old Mortal Kombat 2 right here it, it just gets all the action because it's got a bright screen unless people are on the Gauntlet Legends there but if it's fighting games they'll jump on the Mortal Kombat 2 and they've just been ignoring this one because of the screen looking so bad <laughs> but uh, appreciate you watching and this was pretty much successful we still gotta get the bezel put back on there put the glass back on there and all but it is actually 1.45 a.m. and I'm crazy because I gotta get up and get ready for work at 6 a.m. but I'm sure a lot of you guys have done the same thing. Talk to you later and thanks for watching.